What up, everybody? Uh, we're back with an XNA slash C sharp version of a four player chess game. So, this is in development. I'm working on it right now. Haven't gotten too far, but I just figured hey, I'd show you guys what I'm working on and I'll make progress videos and keep you up to date. Um, so, I want to preface this again with saying that I haven't messed with C sharp itself a lot in the past and this is basically my first time looking at the XNA uh, framework so you know this isn't really a tutorial of this is exactly what to do and how to do it so if that's what you're looking for you might want to go somewhere else but I'm just having a little fun uh, building this game and showing you what I'm doing as I'm building it uh, so let's take a look at what I got so far uh, in my last video I showed you my board piece class and I showed you my piece class those are basically the same as my Java versions but there's a couple extra fields there uh, to handle my drawing the image to the screen so let's go ahead and run this real quick and show you what it looks like so far so it should pull up another window here And so this is what I have so far. I've got my board. Uh, right now, that's a single image. The entire board is a single image. Um, before, when I first started with my first prototype, all of these spaces here, so this is basically a white space, black space, white space, black space, each of those spaces was its own image before. It was its own component or whatever they call it. I'll look at it in a second. But it was its own little image um, and when I started to run that initially, it took a while to load up. And I was like, uh, that's not good. And, you know, I thought about it a little bit, and it doesn't really make sense for each of those to be its own piece anyway. So that was a bad idea. And that was basically a carryover from my text-based version, where it kind of did make sense, uh, to do it there. But in this graphical version, it doesn't make sense. So now my board is a single image. I still have a multi-dimensional array in the background to basically help with the processing but in actually displaying the board it's a single image. Um, so I've got my board there, I've got this little circle right here I'm moving around. Um, basically that's going to be the selector um, or my cursor. So remember in the text-based version the user had to type in some coordinates via the keyboard. Well if I'm moving this to the Xbox uh, that doesn't make sense unless someone's got like a chat pad. But uh, screw those guys. Fucking losers, man. Who needs a chat pad? Come on. So they're going to be using, you know, the analog sticks or the D-pad or something. Uh, right now on my computer, I'm just using the D-pad, you know, the up, down, left, right arrows to move this thing. Um, so that can move around here. Uh, I have my invalid spaces still, so I cannot move up into my invalid spaces. Uh, same thing from the right side to the left side. Uh, I can go over here. I can't move my little selector to an invalid board space. So that's pretty nice. Um, as you can see, I'm drawing a couple of these pawns here. These are blue. I got some white pawns down here. Black and red pawns. So I'm drawing those on the board. Um, again, I could draw more pawns. I can draw my queen. I showed you in the last video. I've already got those sprites basically for all the different piece types. So I could draw all those on the screen right now. But, you know, I haven't gotten that far. There's no point in me doing that at the moment. Um, I also added this in. If I hit enter, if I hit enter on an empty space, nothing happens. But if I hit enter on a space where there's a piece, you hear a little sound effect. Listen for it. You hear a little thunderclap there. Um, if you haven't noticed, the name of this game is Zap Chess. Uh, that comes from basically the authors of this game. Um, and when he, my friend who initially came up with the, this idea, uh, he had named his project Zap Chess. And I was like, Zap like lightning bolts, so when pieces get captured, a bolt of lightning's gonna race across the screen and you'll hear some thunder, so... I thought that was funny, so I put a little thunder sound effect in here. 
and let's hear it again. Uh, so that's pretty cool. So basically, I just did that when you press enter. So I'm pressing enter right now. You can hear it. And nothing happens. But when you hit enter, when the cursor or my selector is on a board piece where there's an actual piece, you hear that sound effect. So that was just me basically testing. Uh, do I, can I detect when my selector is over a board piece where there is an actual chess piece on it? And as you can see, I can do that. So that's pretty good. That's the next step of this process. So the first step, I drew my board. Second step, I can draw pieces on my board. The third step, I can move around the selector so I can read input from my keyboard and I can update my board. I can move my selector around. And the last step so far is I can detect when my selector is over a piece. And I can do sound effects. So that's another step, I guess. Uh, my next step moving forward is going to be actually selecting the piece and then being able to move that piece to where I so choose. So we'll see how that works. Uh, let's close this skin here. Let's look at the code here. So this is basically my main class file, more or less here. Um, so again, this is some standard X and A stuff going on here. Uh, excuse me. Um, so my board sprite, this is my background, so the whole board image itself. And I start that at zero, 00. So again, like I ranted on in the last video, zero, 00 on the computer is the top left corner, which I hate. I wish it was the bottom left corner. That would make sense. That's what they teach you in math. I mean, come on, get with it. I'm sure there's a very good reason. I just have no idea what it is. Um, this is my selector, so that's that little uh, light bluish circle that I was moving around the board. I just randomly start that at 202, 202. Um, so let me run this real quick. Um, I've done a couple graphical things in the past, and I realized that it's nice to have it evenly divisible. So before I made stuff, and they were like, you know, like 37 pixels long, and that made up my screen, a bunch of little images of 37 pixels or some odd number. And that makes math very difficult. So each of these little board pieces is 50 pixels wide and 50, 50 pixels tall. So I uh, wisened up and figured I'd choose a nice, even, solid number like 50. Um, but in my selector here is also basically, is it 50 by 50? It might be 50 by 50, but I wanted it in the middle of my little board piece, so I move it over two to the right and two down, so it's nice and even in the middle. Um, so that's why you see this 202 here, because I move it 2 down and 2 to the right. But I basically just put it somewhere random to start the game with. Here's my sound effect. So I'm basically initializing all my graphics and all my sound effects and all my things like that. Again, I have a thing called board, which is a multi-dimensional array of board pieces. C-sharp syntax is a little different with arrays. I'm still learning, frustrating. I try to do the double brackets and it always messes me up. But I'll learn one of these days. Um, this is a basically bad hard-coded way to say how wide and how tall my board pieces are. Um, you can do it dynamically by fetching basically the height and width of the sprite, which I don't have now anymore. I used to. So I don't know. I'll just hard-code 50. Deal with it. And here's my whole big board piece array. Uh, basically the same thing from the Java version. Um, the constructors for my classes are a little bit different because I pass in vectors now. So my X and Y coordinates for my pieces. Um, the board piece here, these individual board pieces take in a coordinate, but they're not actually used to draw anything. So like I mentioned, a little bit earlier, I was drawing each board piece individually until I realized that was stupid. And now I'm just drawing one big board image. Um, but I'm still 
storing those coordinates within my multi-dimensional array, within my each of my board pieces, because I'll use that for calculating where my chess pieces should go, so where my pawns should be displayed. Um, so that's basically what I showed you before. So this is my board piece class. So these are my pieces. So my pieces will be displayed in the same place as my board piece, but it will be moved over 12 pixels to the right and 10 pixels down. So again, if we run this program real quick, you can see that my pawn is nice and in the middle. If I kept it at 0, 0 or whatever, uh, you know, in relation to this board piece, it would be up in this corner, but I move it 12 two pixels to the right and 10 pixels down, so it's nice and in the middle there. I'm not sure if that'll work well with my other pieces, but it makes my pawns nice in the middle. I don't know if my queens will look nice and centered, but we'll take a look at that later. Um, and I think that's about time. That's about it uh, that I'll have time for in this video. But stay tuned to my next video, and I'll go over this game1.cs class file with you. Thanks for watching.